All right, fam, so we are back at it again with another crazy, crazy video. And I ain't gonna lie, I feel like this video right here, we both gonna enjoy, okay? If you a true follower of Jesus Christ, you're gonna enjoy this video as much as I'm gonna enjoy this video. Now, I watched a little bit of the video, didn't watch the whole thing, but I believe this video is gonna put a lot of things in perspective for us, okay? So without further ado, man, hit the like button, subscribe, turn on post notifications. Also, I wanna give a big, 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 Apology to everyone, okay? Uh, because I haven't been leaking the original videos in the link description box below like I should. I don't want to take no credit for none of these videos that are posted on YouTube. These are videos I'm reacting to from another person's, you know, channel or whatever. So I will start trying my best to link every uh, every video that I react to in the link description box below, so you guys can go show their channel some love. You know what I'm saying? So without further ado, man, let's get it. Let's go. Assignment of our church, uh, Brad, <laughs> is to reclaim culture for That's the cause right. of Christ. Yes. Right. We can't let the devil have swag and surf. That's right. We can't let the devil have walk it out. We can't let the devil have this plastic red bubble bath. <laughs> <laughs> this is not plastic. We got to it. Is, it is. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> we gotta reclaim it for the cause of Christ. Right? We don't make it rain on strippers. We only reverence one stripper. And that's the one that took off glory to put on humanity and then get butt naked on a cross to die for both you and me. The only stripper I'm in love with is Jesus. And he's the one that puts that bread in my pocket. That bread in my pocket. So many songs that have blessed people have been written butt naked next question yeah that right there i see i seen this this little interview oh that was crazy kirk that was crazy you know i was like kirk franklin come on man i'm sorry we did not need to know that you know what i'm saying that was that was crazy i'm gonna let the i'm gonna let this finish out i'm gonna let this finish out. i'm done pausing i'm done pausing until it's finished okay songs that have blessed people have been written butt naked next question really but but not one sock on I straight out the bed, but if you come over to my house, don't sit on that piano bench. <laughs> sit on that piano bench. That piano bench ain't had nothing but uh, cheeks. <laughs> on that piano bench. For Jesus. Next question. I got four boys, right? And it's like, yeah, man, it's crazy. All my friends going to the Rod Wave concert, but you know, we can't go to stuff like that because of who we are. And I was like, well, what's wrong? We don't want to get you in trouble. I don't know if that was reverse psychology or not, but the Ansley and me was like, what you mean? Get me, who, who gonna put me in trouble? They said, well, dad, we know you passed the mic. And no, if we just want to go because we like his music, but people gonna judge you and they gonna hate on you. They gonna be tweeting about you and we don't want that. I messed around and said, you, you want to go? He was like, yeah. I said, well, put your shoes on. I said, like, Lord, I pray don't nobody see me in this thing. Mason all in the front. Mason all in the front like this. Right, the riches, you gonna tell me right, 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 right. But then my baby messed around and looked at me and said, Dad, I said, what? Thank you. I said, I don't care who gonna talk about me. Cause whenever the child tell the father, thank you, it make him do whatever it takes to bless you. I wasn't even going to say nothing about this, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. <clears throat> um, I've been to a couple Diddy parties. This is so frustrating. Okay, before he get his thoughts, okay, shout out to him. By the way, I don't even remember the channel, but it's, it's going to be in the description box below. But we're going to hear his thoughts too. I just want to talk about all these clips, okay? And I, I won't be long, okay? Number one, first of all, let's look at it like this. 
A lot of people won't say, there's nothing wrong with these clips. And, and I'm going to be honest. When I first seen the video, I was like, there's nothing wrong with some of these clips. You know what I'm saying? Like the last song. I'm a survivor. You feel me? I, I, like, it's nothing wrong with this song. It's talking about being a survivor, this and that, this and that. But when I think about it, I had to really, you know, kind of look at myself like, hold on, wait. If this is all happening in God's house, these certain songs shouldn't be played inside of a church. When we think of a church, a church is supposed to be a holy temple to where we, you know, consecrate ourselves in the Lord's presence. It's not where we bring the world into the church and act more like the world than we're acting like we should. Like we, we should be acting like Jesus, not the world. The world hated Jesus. Jesus did nothing but love them, but the world hated them because the world hated him because of his truth. We want people to love us and we want to kind of, you know what I'm saying, like cater to people's feelings and cater to the culture and and be more like the culture. You know what I'm saying? We take Jesus out the out the equation to want to be more like the culture. We want the culture to like us because the culture hate Christianity. So we want them to like us. But that's good that they hate Christianity because guess what? They hated Jesus and Jesus said, if the world hates you, just know they hated me first. Why are we playing certain songs inside the church? This church is supposed to, and Bishop William Murphy, I made a whole video on him, but bro, you talking about, we ain't gonna let the devil have swag and surfing. We ain't gonna let the devil have, uh, walk it out. First, bro, first of all, these songs shouldn't be played in the church, point blank, period. Point blank, period. You, you want to be like the world so the world can like you, so the world can come to church and they can build your pockets up. That's, that's the moral of the story. That's what some of these pastors do. And the Bible tells us to be aware of false prophets that's going to be raised up in the last days. Let Raised up in the last days, these people are leading people astray because they're not even, bro, they don't love Jesus. They don't fear God. They don't fear God no more. The church don't fear God. Okay, they all about trying to cater to people's feelings and trying to oh it's okay that you do this it's okay jesus loves you jesus but we talk about jesus love but we never talk about the wrath that's to come if these people keep living in their sin we talk about don't demasculate jesus now don't demasculate him now because the moment we continue to live in sin is the moment his wrath will come upon us simple as that we're going to get judged judgment day is coming and yet we tell people that, oh, yeah, man, keep doing this. It's okay. It's okay that you feel this way. It's okay that you do this. We can talk to them out of love. We can bring them closer to Jesus and the love. If we're going to be around sinners, all we should be around them to do is show is uh, tell them about repentance. We shouldn't be around them kicking and talking about, yeah, man, so, yeah, ooh, ooh, you know what I'm saying? We're going to go to the club. I'm going to go to a P. Diddy party. What was you doing at the P. Diddy parties, Lecrae? At first, I was with you on that, but I really had to... Bro, this is why you need to have a wife or a husband that is a man of God or a woman of God. I have a wife that is a woman of God, and she had to tell, like, she had to really get on me about that. Like, yo, light and dark don't mix. Light and dark don't mix. You cannot be light inside of a whole filled room of darkness because guess what? The darkness that's around is going to dim the light. How you, man? Look, I, I could go on to a whole topic about that. We're supposed to be the light in the dark, but when you are all around all darkness p diddy parties ain't no light in there bro it, it's you as you feel around this person that person this person that person this person that person this person you you in a room filled with nothing but people that sin nothing but people that don't care about god nothing but people that don't even have no love or fear for the lord and you in these parties doing what exactly are you in these parties telling people about repentance are you in these parties spreading the love of god telling people like hey you need to turn your life around or are you in these parties kicking it trying to talk about music and everything like that you just kicking it and chilling back when jesus was hanging around sinners did he really hang around them just to hang around them did he hang around them to show to show love and tell them about repentance that's the main thing he went around these people to heal the sick and what i mean by that is he went to he went around sinners he was around sinners to, to heal them, to bring them into repentance, not to just hang around them and kick it with them and party with them. He wasn't around to do that thing. He wasn't. He was telling them about God. He was telling them about how they need to repent. He That's what he was doing. What are we doing when we hang around sinners? We kicking it, talking about what we finna do tonight, talking about this and talk about that, but we're not talking about repentance. You see what I'm saying? I'm gonna let the I'm gonna let his thoughts play out, man. This young got me hot, bro. I'm gonna let his thoughts play out and then I'll get the rest of my thoughts, man. Trading to watch. Why? Well, let's talk about it.
the more I do this and see the behavior of these so-called pastors, uh, Christian artists, representatives of Christ, I believe I know why we are seeing what we are seeing. And I'll get to the main reason in a moment. Guys, where's the fear of the Lord? Do they know who they are dealing with? The magnitude of a holy God? There's no fear, no reverence. Holiness has gone out the window. They've turned God's church into a den of thieves. They turn a place of holiness and worship into a club atmosphere, into an entertainment venue. This mixing of the sacred and profane, they mangle the scriptures. They present God an unworthy offering like Cain did, all for the sake of culture. Now, there's a major push for the church to be like the world, for the church to look like the world, act like the world, feel like the world, sound like the world. But in order for you to do this, you have to compromise the word and God's standards. They began to hate what is good and love what is wrong. Many of these so-called faces of Christianity, guys, they have come out in their support to same-sex union, uh, abortion, with their twisting and straight up abandonment of scripture because, because the culture has allowed this or says it's good. So therefore, in their compromised state, they have to say this is okay too. Keep up with the Joneses. What, what a sad state to be in for the culture to dictate your walk with Christ. Sellouts. Sellouts is what they are. You have a Christian artist talking about making songs naked. Why, why are you trying to take people's minds there? He, he's trying so hard to stay relevant with the culture. Yes, Kurt Franklin. And then grinding up on an old lady. Sellout. William Murphy says the assignment of his church is to reclaim culture for the cause of Christ. If I heard that mission statement, I'm out the door. The church is to proclaim and preach the gospel and is a place of worship to the Lord, period. Not chasing the culture. Guys, the culture is ever changing. The culture is continually moving away from anything that represents Christ. And you're going to chase that? This is the purpose of the church? No, Ephesians 4, 13 through 14 says, until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ, then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. This is what should be happening in the church to help us be strong in the word so we will not fall for the deceitful schemes and false teachings. But they're doing the opposite. Forget about the culture. I don't care about the culture. Now, I'm not talking about the people. I'm talking about the culture. It's kingdom over culture. We are the salt of the earth. But what good if the salt loses its flavor? Exactly. When you compromise like this, guys, you lose your flavor. Now, we see this Pastor Mike guy goes to a Rob Rob Rod Wave concert never heard of the guy before in my life, he, but I did take a peek at some of the lyrics and a Christian probably shouldn't be going there. Now, this is insanity what he says. He says, whatever it takes to get uh, the child to tell the father, thank you. So if the son says, I want to, I want to go kill someone I have a problem with, you say, go ahead. And the son says, thank you. According to him, according to his Mixed up theology, mission accomplished. Pastor Mike, can you give me scripture to back that up, to back up that thought process? You can't. Our job is not to be our children's friends. It is to be their parents. You know, the crazy thing that he said, guys, did you hear what he said? He said that <laughs> his sons told him that, oh, people are going to look at you. They're going to judge you. They're going to say, you know, why? Even in the world's 
messed up thinking in, the, in their sinful desires. They know that there should be a standard of Christianity. So if they see a pastor at a Rob Wave concert, they're going to question that. Whoa, why? Why? Why are you here? What are you doing here? And so even the world is will question why is a Christian attending this concert? But again, he dismisses that and says, I don't care as long as I get the approval of my son, which is sad guys and then we see this um uh karen sharad or uh, kira um, kira sharad sharid whatever her name is singing secular songs in the church why only one reason to sound like the world to bring the world in the church to bring the culture in the church you guys don't you guys don't think the devil is not in the church 2 Corinthians 11, 14 through 15. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond to their deeds. Guys, let me, let me ask you this. What good is it if these people are giving you stuff to draw you back in the world. Guys, you know what God brought you out of. And you're going to let these people pull you back in? I'm going to stop it right there. Uh, the reason why I'm stopping it right there is because I want to be able to allow y'all to hear the thoughts that I have. But I will leave the original video in the link description box below, okay? So if you want to watch the rest of the video, you can definitely go down below. It's in the link description box below. Now, first thing first. One thing that he said. They're bringing, and I said it in the beginning, they're bringing the culture. They're trying to be more like the culture. And why do they try to be more like the culture? Because guess what? Now you're bringing people into the church, making it, making them think just because they go to church, they can go to heaven. Oh, because they go to church on a Sunday, but Monday through Saturday, they live whatever way they want to live. But we're going to bring what they're living or what they're doing on Monday and Saturday. We're going to bring that into the church. We're going to bring that into church. The church has literally... I'm not going to say every church because I know the church I have, I go to that church is all about the word of God. It's all about worship. You're not going to see my pastor talking, talking nonsense on that stage. He don't even, bro. He do not care about what people say about him. He don't care. He talk about everything. He get into the politics of this world he get into all these different things that 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 culture is arguing over that the body of christ is arguing over. he canceled all those type of things and guess what my pastor is one of those pastors that will get canceled but at the end of the day they if they hate if they hate uh jesus first or if they hate him just know they hated jesus first simple as that my pastor is one of those pastors that he's all about the word of god he don't care about bringing the culture into the word uh into the uh church he don't care about none of that you know what i'm saying and this is the thing right here with, 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 with Christianity. A lot of people say, dang, what can I do? What can I do as a Christian? What can I do? First of all, you can do a lot. You can have fun as a Christian. You can be yourself as a Christian. But you also got to know where God brought you from. Like he said, you, you got to know what God brought you from. God brought you from a lot of different things. God brought you from the world. The Bible say that we are to be set apart from the world. We are to be set apart. If a, if a person in the world come up to you and they don't even know you're a Christian, that's a problem. Because you act so much like them, they can't even tell if you're a Christian or not. There's so many people who say, oh, yeah, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. I'll be like, dang, bro, I can't tell. Because you you show, you show act like the people that's actually in the world. When, when people come around me, they, they know, they know that I'm a man of God because of the way that I talk. When I talk to people, I'm talking about repentance to people. I'm not just kicking it around and doing this and doing that. And I kid you not, you can ask any of my friends, they will tell you I'm all about talking about God. Yeah, we have other conversations like bowling, basketball. We have some kind of conversations about that. But majority of the conversations, 95, I don't want to say 95, 98% of the conversations I have with people be about repentance. Be about what's your love for God. Do you have, do you know God? Do you know Jesus? That's, that's what 98% of my conversations is about i want since i've been saved i don't want to do nothing but talk about jesus because guess what people are on the verge to hell and they think they on the verge to heaven but the bible tells us that heaven is a very narrow path it's a very narrow path and hell is just wider it's just getting wider and wider day by day second by second because people are continually live for the devil not knowing they living for the devil they think because they live in on they think because they're going to church on a sunday that they're living for god in reality you going to church on sunday that don't matter that don't mean nothing to the lord 
God tells us that our, our righteous deeds are like filthy rags. It don't mean anything. It's all about fearing him, loving him with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. Also, believing in his son, Jesus Christ, that he died on the cross for your sins and that God raised him up from the dead. Believing in that, truly following out them because the Bible tells Jesus, say, if you love me, you will obey my commands. How do you say you love Jesus, but you still want to live like the world? How do you say you love Jesus, but you want to bring the culture into the church? How do you say you want to preach the word of God? Because guess what? You can preach the word of God all day long. You can go to every single school there is. You can go to every theology school. Whatever it is, you can do all that and still end up in hell. You can still end up in hell. A lot of y'all don't know the fear of the Lord. See, when I do these videos and when I do, bro, I fear God. I pray before. And this is not to sound all boastful and say I'm perfect. I pray before these videos because I know how serious this role is. I know how serious ministry really is. And I don't want to lead people astray. But some of these pastors don't care. And y'all follow these pastors because they, because y'all want to make Jesus fit y'all category of life. You see what I mean? Everybody want Jesus to be what they're living in. So if you're, if you're an LGBT, you go create an LGBT Jesus. Oh, didn't Jesus say he loved everybody? Oh, didn't Jesus say this? And didn't Jesus say this? So you're going to make Jesus seem as if some LGBT folks, they think Jesus is gay. They think Jesus is bisexual. They think Jesus is all these different things. But don't disrespect my God. Y'all don't disrespect Muhammad like that, but y'all disrespect Jesus like that. Don't disrespect my God. Have some respect. But none of y'all fear the Lord because y'all feel like nothing happened to y'all yet. So why is it to fear the Lord? Let me tell you a little story. I didn't fear God at one point. I told God I hate him before. I, t I, I used to swear on God's name. I used to say on God and I would be lying straight through my teeth. I would be lying, but I would literally say on God because I didn't fear the Lord. And because nothing happened to me then, because God didn't strike me down, because God didn't kill me or because I didn't get an accident because I didn't do none of that. Because nothing happened to me, I didn't fear the Lord. What I'm trying to say is that just because nothing happened to you yet, oh boy, you better be ready when it when that when the judgment day come, you better be ready. Because guess what? You continue to disrespect the Lord, you continue to not fear God. Guess what? You go end up, my brother. You go end up in hell. You go end up separated from God for eternity. And you don't want that. You don't want that. Hell is serious. Heaven is real. Y'all better be, bro. Y'all better get y'all life right right now. Stop trying to be like the world. Stop trying to seek for attention. Stop trying to seek views and money and fame. Stop trying to seek that the church needs to be better. We are a body of Christ. We are called to build up one another. We are called to accept people, but but preach repentance to people. When I say accept people, I'm talking about they supposed to leave your church changed. <sighs> Whew, bro. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. They supposed to leave your church changed. When people come into your church, they not supposed to leave your church the same. They come into your church just the way they are. God accepts them for who they are. Just the way they are. They come to you just the way they are, but they supposed to come with a whole different mindset. They supposed to leave with a whole different mindset. That's what I mean. They supposed to leave with a whole different mindset. They not supposed to leave your church and still want to do the same things that they want to do. Now, granted, it's not your fault if they do that. That's their choice. But at the end of the day, they are supposed to have some type of some type of level of like, damn man, maybe I should repent. Maybe I should do these things. Maybe I should do these things. Like, come on, they they should have some type of level of repent, some type of level of uh, uh, of of mourning. You know what I'm saying? Like something something but a lot of people they they go into the world they do the things they do in the world then they come to church and the church brings the world to them so again you're not even getting a level of repentance these pastors ain't being real with you they thinking that you just these pastors they all about uh these prosperity pastors what they tell you is god go get your money right like 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 uh mike what is his name um like uh tim ross tim ross I got, he the one that put bread in my pocket. He had bread in my pocket. What? You're talking about, first of all, you just called Jesus a stripper. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I like, I, let me just look up the definition of a stripper because for you to compare a stripper to Jesus, and I get the, I get the message. I get what you was trying to do there, but use better choice of words, bro. And I know we all human, and I know we are. That's why every time you get on before the stage, that's why every time you preach to somebody, every time you do something that's dealing with God, you need to bow, you need to literally consecrate yourself in the Lord's presence. Be, bow your face before the Lord because again you don't want to say one thing that people run with and they take it out of proportion like come on you don't want to do that but if I look at the definition of a stripper a stripper is an exotic dancer is a person whose occupation involves performing strip tees in a public adult entertainment venue such as a strip club 
and we call and, and we sit there and we just call Jesus a stripper. The only stripper I know is no, nah, bro. Come on, man. We gotta do better, bro. We gotta do better as a church. Okay. We seriously have to do better as a church. Y'all, y'all really do. It's is is it's, it's real life getting bad out here, okay? Stop letting pastors lead y'all astray. Y'all need to get into the word of God. See, y'all just go to church and y'all just get whatever the pastor say. The pastor say do this, y'all do it. The pastor say let's do that, y'all do it. The pastor say this scripture say this without showing y'all the scripture, y'all believe it. Y'all need to get into the word of God y'all self. See, when I, I'm, and I'm not, please hear my heart. I'm not saying this to boast. Y'all, I don't care about how y'all may feel what I do. I, like my time with God is sacred. That's my time with God. Y'all don't need to know what I do in my time with God, but I'm telling you that I don't just go to church on a Sunday. I literally consecrate myself in the Lord's presence. Don't get me wrong. Every I may miss a day. I may miss two days. I may miss a, three days. I may, you know what I'm saying? I may miss a couple days of spending my time with the Lord, but most importantly, my main focus is getting into my word. I'm not just waiting for Sunday to come around and say, yep, ready for the pastor to give a good word. And I'm not waiting for that. I'm not. I'm ready to get into the Lord's presence myself because my relationship with God is more important. My personal relationship with God. My pastor can help me, but at the end of the day, he can't get me into heaven. Simple as that. Y'all got to do better as a church, man. I love y'all, man. I'm going to get off this video. Uh, shout out to, let me see if I can see his name real quick. Shout out to Biblically Constructed. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Biblically Constructed, man. Uh, powerful video. The rest of the video, all in English, Chris Boss, below. If y'all want to go check it out for yourself, hit the like button, subscribe to the notifications. Be your boy, the pen. I love each and every one of y'all. God bless. Stay blessed. Peace.